the Black Panthers In the spirit of Asada Shakur We make this movement towards freedom For all those who have been oppressed And all those in the struggle In your book you were talking about a sister you had met uh, in prison um, And her name is escaping me <coughs> L's and she was in, uh, somebody you admired very much. Her name was uh, L.L. L. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and you were talking about your introduction to liberation theology. Um, I was just wondering if. It's not through her, but through a nun. I had uh, a nun in prison. Oh, okay. The person that really introduced me to liberation theology. Yes. I was just wondering how, um, since the time of the book, how, or since that time you have, uh, how that is helped you in your conception of struggle. If I remember correctly, there was some discussion um, between uh, a belief in, in Christianity versus uh, um, communism uh, and socialism and the conflicts between the two. And I was just wondering where uh, you are today with all of that. Well, I, I think that uh, being spiritual and being religious is important to help to internalize what they believe. I don't believe that there's only just religious spiritualism. I think that spiritualism takes many forms. Um, in my own personal life, um, I've studied religion. I've been interested in it because I grew up, you know, down South North Carolina and, you know, church is the center of everything. Um, and then I, I studied Islam. Um, and then uh, when I came to Cuba, is when I discovered uh, the African part of religion that uh, I've never known about or never really been that interested, I guess, before. And I, it's been important for me. Uh, it's, I'm a student of religion. And I believe that it's not either or. I believe that each religion has something to contribute, has wisdom. And that I, I believe that wherever you find wisdom, you should suck it in, breathe it in. And so uh, finding um, and studying the Cuban African religions is important to me. Um, and I'm a, a person that's developing in spiritually, hopefully developing intellectually or in other ways. Because I believe that life is a, is a journey where what you do is you learn and you expand and you try to grow. You know, you know, just grow up, we should continue to grow and hopefully grow better. And so I think that what I look for, what I try to uh, internalize, and what a sister uh, had, that's a good friend of mine, had, was telling me that uh, spirituality is something you should work at to find a peace place where you can peacefully deal with what you have to deal with and do what you have to do. And I believe I have a job to do and I believe I need help in doing it and I look for spirituality to help me to do it. I don't know if that answers your question. Very much so. Just that I, just as I noticed that homes speaking with friends, uh, conflict, if you mention socialism or communism in a discussion, people are often, uh, well, I don't even want to say often, but um, well, sometimes they, they get turned off. Uh, and I just want to have you present Let me give you a, a theoretical answer. Let me turn it around a little bit. I think that one of the most um, damaging um, mistakes that was made in many processes countries that were um, attempting to build socialism was to have a very narrow um, view 
view of religion. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's, we talk about life evolving and religions also can't evolve. You take religion and analyze it as a static dogma is to just completely uh, obliterate religion's ability to evolve. Morality, if you judge morality today, of course the questions are not the same as they were 2,000, 4,000 years ago. And we need answers for morality today, uh, not just, you know, that were found in books that were written by people whose consciousness, uh, who lived in a slave state, you know, uh, who lived in a feudal state. Um, but I think that when you talk about building a socialistic process, then you are talking about building that for people. If you talk about revolution, revolution has to be popular. And in most countries, religion is very strong. So if you are, have a hostile attitude about religion, then that falls over into a hostile attitude about what people believe. If you eliminate religious people, then you're eliminating you know, that sense of the population, and so you're in big trouble when you try to build a revolution. So that I think that uh, when Marx uh, is quoted as saying that religion is the old people, I mean, it, it's quoted, he's quoted in that context by people who haven't read much of Marx on religion. What Marx essentially did was study European religion in Europe, and he kind of focused on the early Christians uh, and their kind of communal way of living and call that kind of communist monastic. Uh, then analyze how religion was used during feudalism uh, to prop up a feudalistic system, which is true, um, et cetera. But I think that what anybody that who wants to wage a, a struggle to liberate a country has to do is to work hard uh, to see that the religious institutions in the place where you're struggling are not, don't become pockets of reactionary viciousness. And that really people in those institutions are familiar enough with the struggle to so, uh, foster uh, social change and with those who are, are, are making that struggle uh, to see it as something positive and as something that is not threatening to their support system, their emotional support system, because for poor people, many times you, know, you, you can't go to psychology because you can't afford it, you can't go to counselors because you can't afford it, and the pain of being oppressed, being poor, being down, down in society is, is acute, whether you, we acknowledge it or whether we don't. And so people need something to turn to when nothing is there, when uh, the pain is unmitigated. So you cannot uh, tell people that that resource that you're using has no value. And so I think that, you know, as people who are, are interested in struggling in the future, that we have to be much more sensitive about religion and much more sophisticated in analyzing religions, not only from a Eurocentric point of view, not from a Eurocentric point of view, but from a worldwide uh, point of view, because there are many religions in the world, and we are terribly ignorant of most of them. And that's it.